No deceit was found in his mouth. Not a person here can say that. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. How many of you could do that? You're not even guilty. And they're insulting you and they're saying all kinds of things. Man, ooh, they're just, there's something in here that wants to boil. There's something in here that wants to, wants to take hold of anger and lash out and criticize and, and threaten. It says, when they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. Tell you what. But listen to what it says that we, uh, in, in chapter 5. Young men in the same way be submissive to those who are older, but he doesn't leave it there. He doesn't leave it as though there's a ruling council, as something was said in the meeting this morning, that just sort of dictates everything. We don't want that. We want Christ to be the head. And so he goes on and he says, all of you, now that takes in the elders, that takes in everybody, all of you clothe yourselves with what? Humility. Humility. There is a submissiveness that we everyone need to the Christ that's in one another. That's our safety. That's the only way that Christ can continue to be the head. Otherwise, you get, you're going to get a personality or some personalities to begin to dominate. God, help me. God, help us. Your, my safety is you. I'll tell you, if I get to be on an ego trip, you need to tell me. We need the Lord. We need him to be the head. And this is one of the great promises. God opposes the proud. You want God to be in your corner and fighting your battles? Let go. God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. This is an aspect of this that, I, that, that just kind of came to me, and it's very much in harmony, I believe, with what's been said. It's very easy to look at a verse like this and think of it in vague terms of just you and Jesus, and I'm going to humble myself under his hand. I'll tell you, God has ways of using his hand that involve a whole lot more than just sort of a vague little something out of the ether waves. God is going to put you and me in situations where the, the, the ugly things in our nature will, will boil to the surface. And it's God's hand that has engineered that. Well, when that happens, what do we do by nature? We lash out at the source. This is where conflicts come between people. This is where resentments, this is where... Uh, all jealousies and all kinds of negative things come into people's lives and keep people's spirits that begin to divide and, and provide the seedbed for Satan to go to work. Because we don't understand that it's God's hand. And God's interested in doing something for you and for me. That if we will be willing to get off our high horse and say, Lord, is it I? Lord, touch the things in my heart, in my life. Let me not view my ego as a little castle to be with, a, with a moat around it, to be defended at all costs against everybody, me against the world. But let me just tear down the walls and understand that you have made me a part of something that is real and eternal. You have joined me to others. We are members one of another. We are to have a unity of heart and mind and purpose and spirit and we are not to allow the enemy to, to come in and to use ego as a, as a means of spreading trouble and difficulty among people. God is, and if I tell you, do you see it if God, if somebody comes to you with a correction, perhaps? It's, maybe it's needed. Maybe they, they see something. You're, they see you getting in a place of danger. And they want to, they're concerned for you. Do you see that as God's hand or do you see that as something to resent and resist? I'll tell you, we have a lot of checking up to do. How do we react to the things that happen around us? Do we see God's hand in that, in our circumstances? God said he led them through the wilderness to do what? To humble them. Well, the humbling came from having to submit to the conditions and trust God. And so, the, you know, the, the serpents, the, the dryness, the, all the difficult, th difficult things they went through, that was God's hand. 
If they had humbled themselves and say, Lord, you have brought us here, but you're a great God. We trust you. We love you. I tell you, God would have rushed. And he, did, and he was so gracious anyway, in spite of all the hardness of the heart that they had. I'll tell you, there's no way that you and I can lose if we humble ourselves before God and quit fighting the battles that self dictates that we fight. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. And in all the process, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. I'll tell you what, I've got all the hope and all the love and the security that I need in him. And I'll tell you what, the fact that he has sent his son to be the example of what we need to be. Didn't fight his own battles, didn't, didn't contend for ego, didn't contend for self. That should tell us what God is after in our lives. So I don't know where you're at right now. I know where I'm at. I know God's touching things. I thank him. I thank him. He's showing me areas where I've, you know, ego's in control. And I just need to say, Lord, help me. Work in my heart. Take this out of me, Lord. God, I know this isn't right. I need you, Lord. Oh, God, work. Change, the, change me in here so I don't have to be an actor. I can be real. I can really love my brothers. I can really love my sisters. I can really be one with them. I can have a submissive spirit as I need to have it, Lord. You know, this is the foundation. You, you get this right. You get a people who have a, a proper attitude of humility towards God and have a proper attitude of humility towards others. You've got the basis for unity. You've got the basis for Christ dwelling and living and operating as the head of his body, the church. And then his life can flow. And then his life can flow not just to us, but out to others. You take this little ingredient, this minor little ingredient out, you've got nothing. You'll have a bunch of religious actors playing at being Christians. May God help us to say, Lord, my heart is on your operating table. Lord, I need your light. I don't trust myself. I don't trust my own thoughts. I need you to govern my heart and my mind and my life and work in it. I yield myself to you. By faith, Lord, I know that there's battles, that'll, there's all kinds of junk and garbage that's going to come out. You know, how do you react when something like that happens? All kinds of ways. Carl mentioned some of them. Condemnation. God knows what you are. There's no condemnation in Christ. He doesn't point out dirt so you can say, oh, I shouldn't have been dirty. That's just ego. What do you mean you shouldn't have been dirty? That's what you are. You're a sinner. We need God. What, who are we kidding? Condemnation. Resentment. Just discouragement. Oh, poor me, poor me. Well, what are you saying right there? Does, that, does your ego deserve pity? That rascal? You look at him, oh, I'm so sorry for that person I see in the mirror. Oh, it's so terrible what's happened. Oh, thank God. Get out a gun and shoot him and say, Lord, I'm, you set me free. We need to be set free from us. Oh, I'll tell you, the Lord wants to fill our hearts with peace, with love, with joy, to take conflicts out of our hearts, take the, the very thing that, that produces conflict out of our hearts. I'll tell you, we do this, Jesus is going to be able to live in his house and express all that he is. And we're going to be amazed at his life and what it can do. Everywhere his life goes, everywhere that river goes, it heals, it restores. You know, maybe some of the things that we're wanting so badly to see are, are hindered and held up by some of these issues. We need to check up our hearts. Is your opinion so, you're so married to your opinion that you can't let, you can't say, oh, I could be wrong. Oh, God, help us to let go of our stubborn ways and say, Lord, take the stubbornness, take the self-will out of my heart. Let me desire only your will and find the place of peace that you have ordained for me to, to live and to walk. And then you will get the glory because you're the only one that deserves it. Praise God.